Matt Ryan has had a very good NFL career with the Atlanta Falcons. He's made four Pro Bowls, won an NFL MVP, and thrown for almost 56,000 yards and 350 touchdowns. But despite his consistently productive seasons, the Falcons have been inconsistent when it comes to winning. How much blame does Ryan deserve for this? Is he a Hall of Famer? This video hopes to answer both of those questions. Drafted third overall out of Boston College, Matt Ryan had one of the best rookie seasons in NFL history in 2008. He didn't put up crazy counting stats, just 3,400 yards and 16 touchdown passes, but his efficiency on a per-throw basis was remarkable, especially considering how he was drafted by a team with one of the worst offenses in the league a year prior. He deservedly won Rookie of the Year and piloted the Falcons to a top 8 offense with the help of new addition Michael Turner, who ran for 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns. Like any rookie quarterback, Ryan had some growing pains along the way, with several truly ugly performances and road losses to Philadelphia, Tampa, and Carolina. Nevertheless, Ryan led four game-winning drives, helping the team to finish 11-5 and and earn a wild-card playoff spot. Their opponent would be the eventual NFC champion Arizona Cardinals, and Ryan's playoff debut was rocky at best, as he averaged under five yards per attempt, took a safety, threw two interceptions, and also lost a fumble which was returned for an Arizona touchdown. Despite Ryan's inconsistent play, the Falcons had a 17-14 halftime lead, but on the opening drive of the second half, Ryan's aforementioned fumble return touchdown put Arizona up 21-17. Following two Atlanta punts, Arizona then expanded the lead to 28-17 following a 14-play 76-yard touchdown drive. The teams would go scoreless until Ryan was sacked in the end zone for an Arizona safety to make it 30-17 with 12-44 left. Ryan would lead Atlanta on a touchdown drive to make it 30-24 with 4-19 left, but Arizona's Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner completed passes of 15, 25, and 23 yards on the final drive, including a clutch 3rd and 16 conversion with 2 17 left to run out the clock. Ryan's rookie season ended on a sour note, but overall it was a massive success for Atlanta as they had found a franchise quarterback to lead the way for the next 15 years. Going into 2009, Ryan was expected to take the leap into elite status, but instead he was a massive disappointment. In terms of era adjusted stats, Ryan was actually below average in every metric besides touchdown percentage and sack percentage. Perhaps injury had something to do with the steep decline from his stellar rookie year, as Ryan essentially missed three games, but he was not the same player. Despite Ryan's mostly subpar play, the Atlanta offense was still very good, once again finishing eighth in points per drive. Atlanta went eight and five in the 13 games Ryan was healthy for, but overall finished just nine and seven and missed the playoffs. The defense was subpar, finishing 19th in points allowed per drive. Ryan had three game-winning drives, but also played like shit in a winnable road loss to New Orleans, in which he threw a brutal fourth-quarter interception in New Orleans' end zone, down 28-24, which New Orleans scored a touchdown off of to pull away late. He was also subpar in road losses to Dallas and Carolina. He did lead back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives late versus the New York Giants, only to lose in overtime without touching the ball, but Atlanta ultimately missed out on a playoff spot largely due to two losses which Ryan missed with injury. A blowout 34-7 loss to Philadelphia and a 26-23 heartbreaker to the Saints at home, which saw Atlanta fail to score on two drives down 26-23 in the fourth quarter. 2010 saw the Falcons waltz to a 13-3 record and the one seed in the NFC behind Ryan's first Pro Bowl season. He threw for 3,700 yards, 28 touchdowns, and just 9 interceptions for a 91 passer rating, although his efficiency on a per-throw basis still wasn't what it was during his rookie year. Ryan led the NFL in both fourth-quarter comebacks and game-winning drives, earning the nickname Matty Ice. Atlanta once again had a top offense, finishing 6th in points per drive, and the defense was solid for a change, finishing 7th and points per drive allowed. All was great until the divisional round versus Green Bay. The game started off well enough with Atlanta taking a 7-0 lead after the first quarter and answering a Green Bay touchdown with a 102-yard kickoff return touchdown to go up 14-7 in the second. Then it was nothing but pain. Green Bay tied the game at 14, then Ryan threw an interception. Green Bay scored another touchdown to go up 21-14 with 48 seconds left in the first half. Then the backbreaker came. With 10 seconds left in the half, the Green Bay 35-yard line, Ryan threw a terrible pass that was intercepted and returned 70 yards for a Green Bay touchdown to give the Packers a 28-14 lead at halftime. After that, the game was never close. Aaron Rodgers had what is probably the best game of his historic career, going 31-36 of for 366 yards, 3 touchdowns, and no interceptions while adding a rushing touchdown on the ground. Green Bay at one point had a 42-14 lead in the fourth quarter before Ryan threw a garbage time touchdown. Green Bay added two field goals late to win the game in dominating fashion, 48-21. 
In addition to throwing two interceptions and a back-breaking pick six, Ryan was also sacked five times and lost a fumble. Disgusting. Ryan had another very good season in 2011, throwing for over 4,000 yards for the first time in his career, while also having 29 touchdowns and a 92.2 passer rating. Falcons offense remained effective, finishing seventh in points per drive, although the defense was below average once again, finishing 17th. Ryan had three game-winning drives, and although Atlanta finished 10-6 and six to make the playoffs, there were a few close losses that proved costly in terms of playoff seeding. A 16-13 road loss to Tampa, which saw Atlanta fail to score a go-ahead touchdown with first and five from the Tampa Bay five-yard line with 4.30 left. A 26-23 overtime loss to New Orleans, which saw Atlanta fail to score a game-winning touchdown with first and nine from the New Orleans nine-yard line with 14 seconds left. Atlanta then got two overtime possessions, but failed to score on both. A 25-14 home loss to Green Bay, where Atlanta took a 14-0 lead early, but failed to score a point over the last 48 minutes. Atlanta had the ball down eight with 8-16 left in the fourth quarter, but Ryan took a sack and then threw an interception. There was a 17-10 road loss to Houston, which saw Atlanta with the ball at the Houston 29-yard line down seven with 2.41 left in the game, but ended with an Atlanta turnover. Ryan's play in all these losses left a lot to be desired. Nevertheless, Atlanta would face the eventual Super Bowl champion New York Giants in the wildcard round. Ryan was looking to reverse the trend of his extremely disappointing first two playoff games, but instead the narrative of him being a playoff choker would only grow. Atlanta's offense scored zero points, and the only points of the game for the Falcons came on a safety. Ryan didn't throw an interception or fumble in this game, but he averaged just 4.9 yards per attempt. Atlanta's offense went three and out five times, turned it over on downs three times. Two times, Ryan failed to convert a fourth and one quarterback sneak inside the Giants' 25-yard line. Despite the offense shitting its pants, this was still a winnable game late in the third quarter. Eli Manning hit Hakeem Nix for a 72-yard touchdown to break the game open. New York would add another touchdown in the fourth to win 24-2. Ryan had the best season of his young career in 2012, throwing for over 4,700 yards, 32 touchdowns, and a 99.1 rating. Ryan also had four fourth-quarter comebacks and six game-winning drives. He had a pass rating over 110 games, seven games with three-plus touchdown passes, and if not for a brutal five-interception game against Arizona, he might have won MVP. Atlanta's offense was elite, finishing second in points per drive, and the defense was also good, finishing 10th in points allowed per drive. Overall, Atlanta finished 13-3 and and secured the one seed in the NFC for the second time in three years. But nobody had doubts about Ryan's regular season prowess. Now it was time to show it in the playoffs, and beating the red-hot Seattle Seahawks, led by the number two defense in the league, in the divisional round would shut up the haters, at least momentarily. Outside of a Ryan interception, the first three quarters couldn't have gone better for Atlanta, as they took a 27-7 lead heading into the fourth. Then, you're not going to believe this shit, but Atlanta blew a seemingly insurmountable lead. Ryan threw a second interception, then Atlanta punted on back-to-back -back drives. Seattle, led by superstar rookie quarterback Russell Wilson, reeled off 21 straight points to take a one-point lead with 31 seconds left. But in the most clutch moment of his career, Ryan earned his Matty Ice nickname, completing a 22-yard pass and 19-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays to get Atlanta into field goal range. Atlanta's kicker Matt Bryant would nail the 49-yard field goal to take a 30-28 lead. Atlanta stupidly did an onside kick, so Seattle had one more chance at a Hail Mary, but it was intercepted. Atlanta had secured its first playoff win in the Matt Ryan era and would host the NFC Championship against the 49ers. The NFC Championship game played out almost identical to the divisional round. Atlanta jumped out to an early 17-0 lead. San Francisco cut it to 17-14, but Atlanta responded with another touchdown to make it 24-14 at halftime. San Francisco scored a touchdown on its opening second half drive to make it 24-21. Then the game became a comedy of errors. Ryan threw an interception on second and 10 at San Francisco's 47. San Francisco would miss a 38-yard field goal, but Atlanta would give it right back when Ryan fumbled on second and nine at San Francisco's 28. San Francisco then fumbled it back on second and goal from the Atlanta 5. Atlanta punted, then San Francisco finally capitalized to take a 28-24 lead with 8.27 left. Ryan would lead a time-consuming drive, which at one point had first and 10 at San Francisco's 16 with 2.23 left. Unfortunately, Atlanta would fail to do anything, turning it over after a Ryan incompletion with 113 left. Atlanta got one more Hail Mary attempt from the 41-yard line with six seconds left, but it fell short. Going into 2013, Matt Ryan was only 28, and Atlanta reloaded for what everybody assumed would be another deep playoff run. It turned out to be the exact opposite. Atlanta bottomed out with a brutal 4-12 record. The defense finished dead last in points allowed per drive, and although Atlanta's offense still gained tons of yards, it finished just 17th in points per drive. Ryan threw for 4,500 yards and 26 touchdowns, but also a career-high 
17 interceptions for a mediocre 89.6 passer rating. Atlanta had so many close losses, you would have thought Phillip Rivers was their quarterback. Week one versus New Orleans, down six with a minute nine left. Atlanta had first and goal from the New Orleans seven yard line, but Ryan threw an interception to lose. Week three versus Miami, Atlanta had a three point fourth quarter lead, missed a 35 yard field goal, then gave up a game winning touchdown on a 75 yard drive with 43 seconds left to lose the game. Week four versus New England, down seven with 59 seconds left. Atlanta had first and 10 at the Patriots 13, but failed to score and lost 30 to 23. Week five versus the Jets was perhaps the most embarrassing loss. Ryan threw a go-ahead touchdown with a minute 54 left. The Atlanta defense then let Geno Smith drive 55 yards to set up a game-winning 43-yard field goal for the Jets as time expired to give the Falcons a 30-28 loss. Week 12 versus New Orleans, Atlanta had two drives in the fourth quarter down by four. The first ended with a fumble at the New Orleans 22-yard line. The second ended with a missed 52-yard field goal with 224 left. Atlanta scored zero points in the second half to lose 17-13. Week 14 versus Green Bay, up by five at the start of the fourth. Matt Ryan fumbled, setting up Green Bay for a 21-yard go-ahead touchdown drive to take a 22-21 lead. Got the ball back again with 44 seconds left and no timeouts, but Ryan threw a desperation interception to lose 22-21. Week 16 versus San Francisco. Atlanta had the ball at the San Francisco 10-yard line with a minute 31 left, down by three, but Ryan threw a terrible 89-yard pick six to lose 34-24. Week 17 versus Carolina. Atlanta had the ball at the Panthers 19, down four with 841 left, but settled for a field goal. They had multiple drives down 21-20, but got nowhere both times to lose the game. Matt Ryan made his third Pro Bowl in 2014, throwing for 4,700 yards, 28 touchdowns, and a 93.9 rating. The Atlanta offense finished top 10 in points per drive, so the team must have done well, right? Nope. Atlanta finished 6-10, largely due to the defense once again being pathetic, finishing 30th in points allowed per drive. Despite having a porous defense, there were still several extremely winnable games Atlanta lost late. Week 4 versus Minnesota, Atlanta had a one-point lead entering the fourth and had the ball down seven, but did nothing. Thing. Minnesota would add two field goals as Ryan threw two fourth quarter interceptions to lose 41-28. Week 5 versus the Giants, Atlanta had a three-point lead entering the fourth, gave up a touchdown drive with 10 minutes left to go down by four. Atlanta then punted and turned it over on downs on their next two drives, while New York added two field goals to win 30-20. Week 8 versus Detroit, Atlanta had an 11-point lead entering the fourth. Detroit scored a touchdown to make it 21-19. Atlanta punted again, pinning Detroit at their own seven-yard line with a minute 38 left. Detroit then went 63 yards, kicking a 48-yard game-winning field goal as time expired to win 22-21. Week 12 versus Cleveland. Atlanta trailed by 9 entering the 4th, but scored a touchdown and kicked a go-ahead field goal with 44 seconds left to take a 1-point lead. Atlanta's defense then allowed a 61-yard drive, which ended with a 37-yard game-winning field goal as time expired to lose 26-24. Week 15 versus Pittsburgh. Atlanta had the ball down 7 in the 4th quarter, but went 3 and out. Never got the ball again and lost 27-20. 15 would be another frustrating season for Atlanta under first-year head coach Dan Quinn. Ryan would throw for almost 4,600 yards and lead four game-winning drives, but he had just 21 touchdowns to 16 interceptions, while the Atlanta offense finished a mediocre 18th in points per drive, despite being fourth in yards per drive. The Atlanta defense improved from 30th to a mediocre 17th in points allowed per drive, and the season started off great as the team was 6-1 and one after seven games, then they collapsed, going just 2-7 and seven over the last nine games, which featured seven several heartbreaking losses. Week 8 versus Tampa Bay, Ryan led Atlanta to 10 straight points in the last 5 minutes to send the game into overtime. Tampa Bay kicked a field goal to go up 3, but Atlanta failed to score on their overtime drive to lose the game. Week 9 versus San Francisco, a memorable loss where new head coach Dan Quinn decided to kick a 19-yard field goal down by 4 with 3 minutes left, and Atlanta never got the ball again to lose 17-16. Week 11 versus Indianapolis, Atlanta had a 7-point fourth quarter lead when Ryan threw a terrible pick six to tie the game at 21. Atlanta then had two drives with the game tied but failed to score on both. Indianapolis kicked the 43-yard field goal with 57 seconds left as Atlanta's final drive ended with an interception as time expired to seal the 24-21 loss. Week 13 versus Tampa Bay, Atlanta took a 19-16 lead off of a Ryan touchdown pass with 10:48 left. The teams exchanged punts, then Tampa scored a go-ahead touchdown with a minute 47 left to take a 23-19 lead. Ryan was then picked on the first play of the last Atlanta drive to lose the game. And finally, Week 17 versus New Orleans. The game tied at 17 with a minute 47 left. Matt Ryan threw a terrible interception to set up New Orleans with a short field, which they used to kick a game-winning 30-yard field goal as time expired to give the Falcons a 20-17 loss. For better or worse, 2016 will 
always be what the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Bryan are most remembered for. You already know how it ended, but you might have forgotten the journey along the way. Bryan had one of the greatest seasons by any quarterback ever, throwing for almost 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns to just 7 interceptions, and a stellar 117.1 passer rating. He had a passer rating over 102 in 12 games, threw 3 plus touchdowns in 7 games, and averaged at least 7.9 yards per attempt in every single game. Atlanta's offense was historically dominant as well, averaging 33.8 points per game and finishing first in both points and yards per drive. The Atlanta offense was so good it carried the team to an 11-5 record despite the defense being one of the worst in the league. Ryan and Atlanta's stellar offensive play continued into the playoffs as they throttled the Seahawks 36-20 in the divisional round behind Ryan's 338 yards and three touchdowns, then absolutely destroyed the Red Hot Packers 44-21 in the NFC Championship game behind Ryan's outstanding 392 yards and five total touchdown performance. Ryan deservedly won NFL MVP the night before Super Bowl 51, and it looked like he would be adding a Lombardi Trophy and Super Bowl MVP to his resume about midway through the third quarter of the Super Bowl, as he threw his second touchdown of the game to give Atlanta a dominating 28-3 lead over the favored New England Patriots. You guys know the rest from here. What happened over the final 23 and a half minutes of Super Bowl 51 is so extreme and hard to believe that it made me question for the first time in my life whether or not pro sports were rigged. I could literally make an entire video just about the Falcons' chokes in this game, but that would be too painful. So I'll just highlight key moments that led to the Falcons' unprecedented meltdown. Number 1. Up 28-3, Atlanta's defense had New England on 4th and 3 at the 46-yard line with 6.04 left in the 3rd, but gave up a 17-yard catch to a wide-open Danny Amendola. Number 2. Up 28-3, Atlanta's defense had New England on 3rd and 8 at Atlanta's 35 with 4.49 left in the 3rd, but allowed Tom Brady to run for an easy 15-yard first down. New England eventually scored a touchdown to make it 28-9 with 2.22 left in the 3rd. Number 3. Up 28-9, Atlanta had 2nd and 1 at New England's 32-yard line with a minute and a half left in the third quarter, but committed a holding penalty to push the ball back 10 yards to New England's 42. Ryan threw an incompletion on 2nd and 11, then on 3rd and 11 took a sack to push the team out of field goal range. Number 4. Up 28-12, to Atlanta had 3rd and 1 at 36-yard line with 8.31 left in the game, but Devonta Freeman whiffed on a block to get strip sack, setting New England up with the ball at Atlanta's 25-yard line. Number 5. Up 28-12, to Atlanta's defense had New England on 3rd and 11 at Atlanta's 26 with 7.03 left in the game, but Falcons cornerback C.J. Goodwin fell down, giving Brady an easy first down throw to rookie wide receiver Malcolm Mitchell. Number 6. Up 28-18, Atlanta's defense gives up a two-point conversion on a James White run. Number 7. Up 28 to 20, Atlanta got the ball down to New England's 22-yard line with 4:40 left, following an incredible catch by Julio Jones. Atlanta then ran for negative one yards on first down to put the ball to 23-yard line. Ryan then took a 12-yard sack on second down to push the ball back to New England's 35-yard line. Atlanta then committed a holding penalty to push the ball back to New England's 45-yard line. Then Matt Ryan threw an incompletion on third down, forcing another punt. How the fuck does this happen? Number eight. Up 28 to 20, Atlanta's defense had New England first and 10 from New England's 36-yard line with 228 left. Tom Brady threw a horrible pass that should have been picked, but the ball went through Atlanta quarterback Robert Alford's hands and somehow fucking ended up in Julian Edelman's hands for a 23-yard catch. Are you fucking kidding me? Number 9. Up 28-26, to Atlanta's defense gave up another two-point conversion. Number 10. Atlanta loses the overtime coin toss. Number 11. Tied at 28, New England had first and goal at the Atlanta two-yard line. Tom Brady threw a terrible fade pattern to tight end Martellus Bennett, Atlanta linebacker Vic Beasley got his hand on the ball but failed to catch it. New England would score the game-winning touchdown on the next play. Considering how devastating the end to 2016 was, it's incredible the 2017 Falcons made the playoffs at all. Ryan had a better season than his numbers would indicate. 4,100 yards, 20 touchdowns to 12 interceptions for a 91.4 rating, which featured several fluky interceptions and dropped touchdowns. Atlanta finished 7th in points per drive, which is really good, but considering the team had the same personnel and offensive talent as the historic offense the year before, it was a bit underwhelming. Replacing offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan with Steve Sarkeesian didn't help matters, obviously. Defensively, Atlanta remained below average, finishing 20th in points allowed per drive. Atlanta finished 10-6, and six, although there were once again several close losses that prevented the team from getting another first round bye. Week 4 versus Buffalo. Ryan threw a touchdown to tie the game with 7.04 left. Buffalo responded with a field goal to go up 3 with 4.48 left. Then Ryan threw an interception, which Buffalo 
Buffalo's scored a field goal off of to go up 23-17 with 3-10 left. Ryan drove Atlanta to Buffalo's 10-yard line with 49 seconds left, but turned the ball over on downs to end the game. Week 6 versus Miami. Atlanta had a 3-point lead entering the 4th. Miami tied the game with 8:39 left. Atlanta punted, then Miami kicked a go-ahead field goal with 2:35 left. Ryan drove Atlanta to Miami's 26-yard line with 47 seconds left, but threw an interception to lose the game 20-17. Week 9 versus Carolina. Down 20-10 in the 4th quarter, Julio Jones dropped a wide-open touchdown on 4th and 7 that would have made it 20-17 with 8 minutes left. Atlanta would score a touchdown to make it 20-17 with 3:25 left and got the ball back down 3 with 2:18 left, but turned it over on downs to lose 20-17. Week 13 versus Minnesota. Atlanta had a 9-7 lead entering the fourth quarter, but gave up a touchdown in the first play of the quarter to go down 14-9. Atlanta had two drives down 14-9. The first one ended in a punt, while the second ended with a missed 45-yard field goal with 5-04 left. Atlanta never got the ball back to lose 14-9. Despite these losses, the team went and put up an impressive 26-13 win on the road against the upstart Los Angeles Rams in the wildcard round. Their reward would be traveling to Philadelphia in the divisional round, led by backup quarterback Nick Foles. Atlanta's offense got off to a slow start, but seemed to right the ship after a Ryan touchdown pass put the team up 10-6 in the second quarter. Atlanta held on to a 10-9 lead at halftime following a fluky catch by Philadelphia, but Atlanta's offense overall was unable to get anything going, punting on all three third-quarter drives to fall behind 12-10 going into the fourth. Philadelphia would add another field goal to go up 15-10 with 6.05 left, then Ryan led Atlanta on a 74-yard drive, including a clutch fourth-down conversion to Julio Jones that set up Atlanta with first and goal to Philadelphia 9-yard line with 119 left. Ryan threw two incompletions, then had a 7-yard throw to Julio to set up the deciding fourth and goal from the Philadelphia 2-yard line. On the final play, Ryan was flushed out of the pocket and threw up a difficult but catchable pass to Julio Jones that ended up going through his hands, ending the Falcons' season with a disappointing 15-10 loss. Matt Ryan had a stellar individual season in 2018, throwing for over 4,900 yards, 35 touchdowns, and just 7 interceptions with an excellent 108.1 rating. He didn't make the Pro Bowl, however, which was largely due to the Falcons finishing just 7-9 and nine and missing the playoffs. Like much of Ryan's career, Atlanta's offense was great, finishing 4th in points per drive, but held back by a lackluster defense that finished 30th in points allowed per drive. Also, like most of Ryan's career, 2018 featured some excruciatingly close losses. Week 1 versus Philadelphia, Atlanta took a 2-point lead with 9.48 left, got the ball back with the 2-point lead, but punted. Atlanta's defense then gave gave up a touchdown and two-point conversion with 2.19 left, then in almost an eerie repeat of the previous season's ending. The game ended with Ryan throwing an incompletion inside the Philadelphia five-yard line to Julio Jones as time expired to lose the game 18-12. Week 3 versus New Orleans, Ryan was incredible, throwing for 374 yards, five touchdowns, and no interceptions for a 148.1 rating, including a five-yard touchdown pass to put Atlanta up seven with 6.58 left. But Atlanta's defense gave up a touchdown with 115 left. Atlanta got the ball back, but punched New Orleans then got the ball in overtime and scored on their first drive to end the game and give Atlanta a 43-37 loss. The next week against Cincinnati, Ryan was incredible once again, throwing for 419 yards, 3 touchdowns, and no interceptions for a 134.5 rating. Atlanta took a 5-point lead with 418 left following a 32-yard field goal, but Atlanta's defense allowed Andy Dalton to drive 75 yards, convert two fourth downs, and throw a game-winning 13-yard touchdown pass with 7 seconds left to give the Falcons a 37-36 loss. Week 11 versus Dallas. Atlanta had a three point lead entering the fourth quarter, but Dallas scored two straight touchdowns thanks to a Ryan interception to take a 19 9 lead with 12 26 left. Ryan then led Atlanta to 10 straight points of their own, a 21 yard field goal where Atlanta failed to score a touchdown despite having second and five from the Dallas six yard line, followed by a Ryan touchdown pass with a minute 52 left to tie it at 19. Atlanta's defense then gave up a 51 yard drive, which ended with Dallas kicking the game winning 42 yard field goal as time expired to give Atlanta a 22 19 team loss. The 2019 season saw much of the same as 2018 for Atlanta, as the team once again finished 7-9 to miss the playoffs. Unlike 2018, Ryan was merely just okay, not great, in his 15 starts, throwing for 4,400 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions for a 92.1 rating. He missed just the third game of his career with an injury, which Atlanta lost to Seattle by 7. Atlanta's defense was still sharp overall, finishing 8th in points per drive, while the defense remained anemic, finishing 27th in points allowed per drive. There weren't as many super close losses for Atlanta as in years past, but that didn't mean there weren't any at all. Week 3 versus Indianapolis, Ryan threw a touchdown pass to Julio to make it 27-24 Indy with 4.17 left, but Atlanta's defense allowed Indianapolis to run out the rest of the clock to seal the
the game. Week 6 versus Arizona. Ryan was excellent, throwing for 356 yards, 4 touchdowns, and no interceptions for a stellar 144.9 rating. He threw a touchdown to make it 34-33 Arizona with 153 left, but Atlanta kicker Matt Bryant missed the extra point. Arizona recovered the onside kick to seal the 34-33 loss for Atlanta. And finally, Week 13 versus New Orleans. Atlanta trailed by 17 with 632 left. Ryan then led a touchdown drive to make it 26-15 with 326 left. Atlanta recovered an onside kick, added a field goal to make it 26-18 with 156 left. Atlanta then recovered a second onside kick to get the ball near midfield with 154 left, but Ryan was unable to do anything with it and turned it over on downs. After several years of mediocrity, the bottom completely fell out for Atlanta in 2020 as the team finished with a 4-12 record. Ryan threw for almost 4,600 yards and 26 touchdowns, but was merely average on a per-throw basis, as was Atlanta's offense, which finished just 15th in points per drive. And you're not going to believe this, but Atlanta's defense was bad, finishing 21st in points allowed per drive. Atlanta lost an incredible 8 games by 7 points or less, including some comically bad blown leads. Dan Quinn was eventually fired after an 0-5 start, but a head coaching change didn't prevent the team from choking away games. Week 2 versus Dallas, Matt Ryan was excellent, throwing 4 touchdowns and no interceptions for a 126.3 rating. Atlanta had 1st and 10 at the Dallas 12, up 12 with 8.57 left, but settled for a field goal to take a 15-point lead with 8 minutes left. Dallas would score 2 touchdowns over the next 6 minutes to make it 39-37 with 2 minutes left, then recovered an onside kick and kicked the game-winning field goal as time expired to give Atlanta an improbable 40-39 loss. The next week versus Chicago, Atlanta had a 16-point lead entering the 4th, but failed to make it 29-10 after missing a 48-yard field goal. Chicago scored a touchdown to cut it to 10, Atlanta punted, Chicago scored another touchdown to cut it to 3, Atlanta punted again, then Chicago scored a third touchdown to make it 30-26 with 153 left. Ryan was then picked off at the Chicago 44-yard line with 114 left to end the game. Week 5 versus Carolina, Atlanta had the ball at Carolina's 5-yard line down 7 with 855 left, but Ryan threw an interception. Atlanta never got the ball within one score the rest of the game to lose 23-16. Week 7 versus Detroit, Atlanta had two drives in the fourth, up 14 to 13, but turned it over at Detroit's 13-yard line on the first, then fumbled on the second drive to give Detroit great field position, which they used to kick a field goal to go up 16 to 14 with 3:21 left. Atlanta took a 22 to 16 lead off of a touchdown and two-point conversion with 104 left, but Atlanta's defense gave up a 75-yard touchdown drive, including a game-winning touchdown pass as time expired to lose 23 to 22. Week 13 versus New Orleans, Atlanta had the ball at the Saints 13 yard line down 5 with a minute 55 left, but ended up turning the ball over after 2 runs for negative 7 yards and an incompletion. Atlanta got the ball back with 27 seconds left, but a last ditch effort ended with a Hail Mary incompletion to seal the 21-16 loss. Week 14 versus the LA Chargers. Atlanta had 3 fourth quarter drives with the game tied at 17. The first ended in a punt after Ryan had intentional grounding on 3rd and 1 at the LA 38 with 12.40 left. The second ended with a Ryan interception on 2nd and 17 from LA's 26 yard line with 3.52 left. LA threw an interception themselves. Then the third Atlanta drive of the quarter ended with another Ryan interception from LA's 45 yard line with 36 seconds left. LA drove 48 yards to kick a game winning 43 yard field goal as time expired to give Atlanta a 20 to 17 loss. Week 15 versus Tampa Bay. Ryan played well, putting up 336 yards and three touchdowns for a 110.6 rating. But Atlanta blew a 24 7 second half lead, including a 27 24 fourth quarter lead. Tampa Bay scored a go ahead touchdown off of a 46 yard Tom Brady touchdown pass to accuse rapist Antonio Brown to go up by four with 619 left. The two teams then traded punts, giving Atlanta the ball back down four with 244 left, but Atlanta turned the ball over on downs to seal the loss. And finally, week 16 versus Kansas City. Ryan once again played well, throwing for 300 yards and two touchdowns for a 121.1 rating. Kansas City kicked the field goal to go up 10-7 early in the fourth. Then Ryan had Atlanta inside Kansas City's 20-yard line on the next drive, but wide receiver Brandon Powell fumbled. Kansas City punted, then Ryan threw his second touchdown of the game to give Atlanta a four-point lead with 4.33 left. Kansas City answered with a touchdown to go up three with 1.55 left. Ryan drove Atlanta into field goal range, but Atlanta's kicker missed a 39-yard field goal attempt with 14 seconds left to seal the 17-14 loss for Atlanta. Now that I've gone over Ryan's career in depth, several questions need to be answered. How much blame does he deserve for Atlanta's mediocrity and whether or not he's a Hall of Fame quarterback? In terms of how much blame Ryan deserves, I don't believe he deserves a ton and the reasons why are simple. In 13 years as Atlanta's starter, Ryan's offenses have finished top
top 10 in points per drive 10 times. On average, his offense has finished 9th in points per drive and 7th in yards per drive. That's stellar. The exact opposite can be said for his defenses. Only two times in 13 years has Ryan had a top 10 defense, 2010 and 2012. In those two years, Atlanta finished 13-3 and three both times. This is also partly why Ryan won an incredible 72% of his starts from 2008 to 2012, but just 45% of his starts from 2013 to 2020. In Ryan's 11 other seasons besides 2010 and 2012, his defenses have finished 17th or worse in points allowed per drive. Five times Ryan has had a bottom six defense, and on average, his defenses finished 21st in points allowed per drive. And it's not because of poor field position either, as Ryan's defenses have finished a disgustingly bad 26th on average in yards allowed per drive, never ranking higher than 17th in any of Ryan's 13 seasons. Some may say Atlanta's lackluster defenses may be due to the team putting so much money into the offense, but I find that to be a weak excuse. You can't just explain away almost a decade and a half of terrible defenses because of that. There are countless examples of teams with highly paid quarterbacks having elite defenses. In fact, six of the top eight quarterbacks in terms of cap hit in 2020 had top 10 defensive support. Tom Brady had the highest cap hit in 2006 and his defense finished third. It is fair to say Ryan has had talent around him offensively throughout his career. Julio Jones is a Hall of Famer, Roddy White was a pro bowler slash all pro, Tony Gonzalez was still excellent in five years with Ryan, but to say Ryan is a product of the talent around him is false, as he has always put up big counting stats and his offenses have always churned out yards regardless of who is playing. A fair criticism of Ryan has been his somewhat disappointing efficiency in the red zone throughout his career, as Atlanta has finished just 15th on average at converting red zone trips into touchdowns during his 13 years. This explains why his teams almost always do better in yards than points, and why his era-adjusted touchdown percentage is underwhelming. Because of his inconsistency in the red zone and his habit of taking untimely sacks late in games at times, I will say Ryan deserves about 10-15% to of the blame for the Falcons never winning a Super Bowl. But the biggest culprit for Ryan being ringless is easily his shitty defenses. So, is Ryan a Hall of Fame quarterback? As I alluded to earlier in the video, if Atlanta had hung on to win Super Bowl 51, I don't think there would even be a discussion. In my opinion, Ryan is a Hall of Fame quarterback, although he is obviously not on the level of the inner circle greats like Rodgers, Peyton, Marino, Mahomes, Breeze, or Steve Young. What separates Ryan from another big stats no ring guy like Phillip Rivers, who I don't believe to be a Hall of Famer, is that Rivers had elite talent on both sides of the ball at various times throughout his career, whereas Ryan has only had support offensively. Ryan has an MVP for playing at a historic level. Rivers never did that. Ryan led his team to a Super Bowl with his outstanding play. Rivers never did. Ryan has even played well in a Super Bowl, which is something not even Hall of Fame quarterbacks like Peyton, Marino, Fouts, Moon, Kelly, Unitas, and Tarkenton can say. Ryan struggled in the playoffs early on, but he actually now has some of the best playoff numbers and efficiency of any quarterback in NFL history, thanks largely to his play in 2012 and 2016. If Harry Douglas never slipped late in the 2012 NFC Championship game, Ryan would most likely have two Super Bowl appearances on his resume. Ryan is the anti-Brady in that whatever can seem to go wrong for his teams does go wrong. There is zero doubt in my mind if Ryan was blessed with consistently good defenses like Brady, Big Ben, or Russell Wilson early in his career, he would have at least one Super Bowl ring and a much better win-loss percentage than he actually does. Instead, he will have to try and continue to carry shitty defenses to respectability. If only he knew how to activate the will of his defenses 